Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth. Now, this is a new week, and I know one thing. God has a lot in store for you. And listen, this is the week of Christmas. I hope you are planning to celebrate Christmas big time. Now, we've been talking about who is Jesus, and it's coinciding with this season because this is the season we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And before we go into the broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Join me now as you declare these words with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. And Father, we honor you today because your word is coming strong. And your spirit is ministering truth in our hearts. And I declare right now, every body is lifted. Every yoke is destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 16 book of john chapter 16 thank you lord jesus we are still talking about who is jesus now the background of what we're talking about is what jesus said in um, john chapter 17 and verse 2 he says verse 3 says this is life eternal that they might know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent so i said if you don't know jesus you have no business with eternal life because eternal life is about the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, John chapter 16 and verse 7. Now, I've talked to you about how Jesus, um, just do a little recap, how Jesus was there from the beginning and how he had to become a man. The reason he became a man is so that he can free man from sin. He didn't need to become a man to fulfill his ministry. His ministry, the ministry of Jesus from the foundation of the world was not to die for man. The ministry of Jesus was to give life to man. It was Jesus that was supposed to bring man to the place of, um, into the image and likeness of God, like God said in Genesis chapter 1. It was Jesus' ministry to usher man into that place by giving man eternal life. Now, that's what God has assigned for Jesus to do before the world began. Meaning, if Adam and Eve had not sinned, Jesus still had a ministry to fulfill in their lives. But because of sin, Jesus couldn't fulfill his ministry until the issue of sin was, is dealt with. And that's the reason Jesus had to come as a man first to deal with the issue of sin. And guess what? He didn't carry out his real ministry when he was on earth. He didn't. So I say, what do you mean? You know, we've always had this mentality that the ministry of Jesus was to die for our sins. No, he himself said it. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. That's why he came. He came to give us life. He didn't come to die for us. Now, Adam didn't have this life even before he, he, he fell. He didn't have the life. So sometimes we will say, oh, restore us to the place where Adam was in the Garden of Eden. No, sir. God has moved beyond that. Praise God. Yeah, he's moved far beyond Adam. He's moved far beyond the Garden of Eden. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because Jesus has come. And now, having dealt with the sin issue, having made himself a sacrifice for sin, knowing fully well that the Father will raise him up. And the Father, having raised him up, to do what? That he may go into the fullness of his ministry. And that's why I'm reading John chapter 16 verse 7. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, it was better for you that I go away. For if I 
Go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus said, look, it is for your benefit. It is for your sake. It is expedient for you that I go. Why? The truth is he had to go so that he will fulfill his real ministry. Isn't it amazing? Praise God. You know, the things Jesus said to the disciples, he kept telling them of the future. He says, in that day, in that day, which day is he talking about? The day he will begin to minister to them in his capacity that God ordained for him to operate. You know, you need to understand this. You, you, you know, people think, oh, Jesus finished his work and then he's gone to heaven. No, sir. He left the earth to go and start his work. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what, that's the truth. For example, Jesus said to the disciples, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. But he never started any church when he was alive. He didn't start any church. Have you ever thought about that? He, he, you know, the disciples didn't even get born again when he was alive. Until he left. Are you getting this thing? So, I will build my church. So, where's the church? The church never started. Now, I'm not talking about setting up an organization structure. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the first person to get born again. It's on the day of Pentecost when the disciples were together and the Holy Ghost came upon them. And that's when they got saved. That's when they got born again. So Jesus, even after his resurrection, did not get anybody born again. Until he went into the fullness of his person. And that's why he prayed that prayer in John chapter 17. It says that glory. Let, let's read it again, you know. Thank you. Verse 5. John 17, verse 5. It says, It says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Did you see that? He is requesting the Father now. Okay, I'm done with this work here. Now glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world was. So, the father is not going to say, what are you talking about? No. He knew exactly what he was talking about. But I want this to get into your mind, and that's the truth. Jesus didn't enter into his ministry until he left, he died, and rose from the dead, and then went into heaven. When he went into heaven, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews tells us, he went in as our forerunner. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to read some things to you so that you get some um, clarification. Book of Psalms, chapter 110. Now, this David was speaking here in prophecy and talking about Jesus. I want to show you something here. He says, The Lord has sworn, verse 4, Psalm 10 and verse 4, The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the other of Melchizedek. Now, David here was speaking prophetically about Jesus. And he was declared now, now by this time, there is a man by in Genesis, you remember the story, Melchizedek met Abraham when he was coming back from the slaughter of the kings. And Abraham gave him a tithe of all. And, and, and actually, you know, you know, sometimes people thought, help our generation, Lord. It's sad. When people don't, that don't have understanding speak of things they know nothing about. And those who don't have understanding with them know, yes, yes, he's telling the truth. 
If, if the Spirit of God doesn't open your eyes to these things, you will never see them. You don't see them by reading many books. No, sir. I tell you, no. It takes revelation to see some of these things. Not because God is hiding them. But listen, you've got to be serious-minded with God for him to reveal these things to you. And not for the purpose of argument. For the purpose of learning and living it. So, Abraham met Melchizedek and it was Melchizedek that taught Abraham concerning tithe. Abraham didn't just see Melchizedek and say, oh, um, I, I, we used to tithe. So, no, 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 no. Before then, we never heard anything about tithe. So, Melchizedek must have introduced it to Abraham and commanded him to do it. And he did. And then Melchizedek told him, now lift up your hands and say this with me. You have to swear before me. Swear what? That you are not going to take even a shoelace from all these things that you're carrying. They are my spoils of war. Yes, I know. But I don't want you to take any of it. Because I don't want anyone to take responsibility for your wealth. Mm. All right, sir. So lift up your hands, he did. Say this, he said, I will not, I will not take, take even a shoelace from him. And Abraham confessed it. They had, you know, Abraham confessed before the king. He says, I have sworn before the Lord most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take even a shoelace from him. He was referring to Melchizedek. So Melchizedek was the Lord. Hmm. He wasn't one king somewhere that just showed up. Melchizedek was the Lord. Abraham referred to him when he was talking to the king. He said, I have sworn before the Lord most high. Where do you think he did that swear? When he was with Melchizedek. May the Lord give you understanding. So, now this, what David is saying here prophetically is that God is speaking of another that will be made a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek was referred to as a king, also as a priest. Zechariah chapter 6. Zechariah chapter 6. I was checking if I have time to look at this. But I need to show you this now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now look at verse 12, Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow out of his place and shall build the temple of the Lord. Now he was talking about Jesus. I'll show you this in a moment. He was talking, maybe in the next broadcast, he was talking about Jesus. So he called him the branch. Now, look at this. Look at verse 13. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. So he's going to have a throne to rule upon. That means he's going to be a king, right? Now watch this also. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. So he's going to be a king and he's going to be a priest. Did you get that? Now Jesus didn't do this when he was on the earth. But Holy Spirit, you need to help us. Help us understand this thing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to continue from here too because my time is up. I need to break this down for you to see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.